whitelist so that we can basically, uh, you know, let you know, government who has access to the actual uh, uh, the, the teachers' facilities. So I've just just pasted it into the the channel that I'm looking at, and uh, and then come into it. So. I'm going to uh, uh, close my uh, tab here and give myself a bit of a boost in the audio quality and go to Discord for anybody who wants to ask anything or uh, explore this any further. Thank you. Okay, so I'm um, uh, actually, actually here, so if we can, anyone has got any thoughts? So uh, actually, my, my internet connection is very uh, slow, but you can just see that uh, console image that I see that's just come up there. So at the at the in in the end, that console will show the the uh, video uh, progress and the preview of the like three D uh, uh, stuff. But at the moment, as you go forward to the next, it shows the uh, presentation slides are there, so you don't need to like look at the screen. So as you step through, you always know where you are as the teacher. But I've I've not quite got the the uh, video preview because actually the teacher doesn't and um, actually need the video on the screen it's probably easier for them to have it on the console there so uh, but I don't want to have uh, two uh, video signals so uh, there's a, a, a little bit of work to do just so when the, the video starts uh, for students it's displayed on the big screen and for teachers it's displayed on the console so that's, that's how, how that would work and then the idea is is that that the screen on the consoles are also active so although they're like fixed uh, buttons around the edge we could have effectively what would be like in like have the feel of like a touch screen which could have some some uh, custom like f uh, features in the you, you know the uh, right that might be if there's some 3d content which required some interactivity by the teacher then uh, that screen would be where that stuff can sort of uh, take place so it's like an evolution so we're trying to build a framework which basically allows us to kind of uh, uh, grow and try and offer something like this that's a, yeah, a bit unique and I'm sure there's other people in the 3D space they've got you know their approaches and uh, you know, so so there we are if anyone's got any questions just like feel uh, free and we've got uh, uh, Carl on the, on the line as well so uh, in terms of the university we've got uh, we've got actually three of the five of us on the call so this is probably a, a very concentrated call of university uh, knowledge so now's the time to ask anything Actually, actually, hi, Arthur. Uh, Anybody got anything for me? So, the yes, this this uh, classroom itself is actually like it, it. It's designed to be kind like the interior. I I actually. You know, try to make something as normal and uh, you know bland and uh, downbeat as possible for the simple f uh, contrast between that and the content. But th this this uh, rig will be rolled out in 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 you know lots of uh, places. And the next sort of big place that's gonna this is gonna be is in the VR Academy, which is a piece of of uh, work that uh, 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 Kathleen's taking forward. And that's basically got a bunch of classrooms in. So I've got to do the uh, job of putting this rig into all of the classrooms in the in the the, the uh, VR academy, and then uh, you know this can be used within the, the uh, context of of uh, that. So for example, uh, there are sandbox parcels. Uh, so a, and the uh, you know so it, it's it's. It's basically we want to be able to sort of expand this out and let the three D side get uh, you know have a lot of control and be able to use it to sort of uh, you know teach all about uh, decentraland as well as like obviously specific subject uh, like you know areas that are just in their own academics uh, fields as well. But so anybody got any questions? And I think I'm going to. Tie it back up. Actually, actually, actually Carl, have you any, yes, anything? I have, a, I have a question uh, myself. Cool. Um, it's a, just kind of a simple technical question. Um, the whitelist for controlling things here and there in the university, will that be uh, yeah. server-based so you don't have to reload the scene? Uh, yes, so basically uh, it, 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 
It exactly is. So uh, at the moment, the whitelist is very uh, crude. I haven't actually implemented security to the the, uh, the uh, proper uh, depth yet. The mechanisms are there in the SDK code, but it's pretty much hard coded to a a, a whitelist in a in a hard coded uh, adjacent structure of wallet addresses at the moment. But it's basically that there is an authoritative server, which is like, for example, I'm using to 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 uh, you know display the updates to the uh, the uh, class. So uh, when people enter the uh, when the scene the the scene loads, it will just load a JSON structure from that. So we won't have to redeploy anything, yeah. you know. Per, and over you know, time, per you could hook that up to something smarter like a class rental scheme. Yeah, I, I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think one of the the model I'd love to have is that you know, ideally there would be like a master NFT, which is basically, and it and it might not have to be an NFT. We may decide that it's better, to, uh, you know, to you know, to do it with lists of addresses. But if you, let's just go with NFT. So if you had a a master like NFT, that kind of you know gives you ownership of of or you know the rights to use that classroom for all of the time. So th yeah, there'll be some who would just like an open classroom that's uh, theirs and it, and. Uh, they have the rights to teach and so on, and it's pretty, you know, loosely structured. But but what would be really cool is to have a user interface, which like like a you know presents like a a, a time uh, table for that uh, classroom, and then the person with the NFT is then able to, uh, uh, like allocate uh, uh, like specific addresses to teach at different slots on the timetable, and also in you know so it's actually. It's a business opportunity for someone who who has a commercial school. So, for example, I I know a guy who runs a, a school of English, and he he has a whole bunch of uh, uh, people working for him who teach English as a foreign language. So, uh, my proposal for him for him is for him to have a, a classroom, and then he's got uh, control of it, and then basically he can organise who's in it at what sort of a time. But at a later date. We could make it so that it would even be uh, possible to um, uh, mint s uh, some uh, tokens. If so, for example, if you established a successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a sort of a teaching uh, program, you you know, you might actually want to uh, like sell uh, teachers the ability to uh, teach there. If you wanted to have it, you know, so it's it's kind of like. The, the, yeah. the teachers have their own own their clients. Then, if we could somehow to have the, a to the master, just may I? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, as you go, as you go for it. Yeah. Um, when you mint a master NFT, if you use an NFT, if you don't use an NFT, this problem wouldn't exist. But if you have a master NFT, what, are, do NFTs have the ability to expire, like for a term of a year or uh, renewable, <laughs> like? Uh, well, they, well paid, paid another year of rent. I mean, you follow me? Well, uh, we would be able to have a. I mean, if effectively the NFTs can can persist uh, uh, forever, but then we can build a rental contract and use you know that NFT as the like as the key, you know, uh, you know as a as the owner of a specific uh, you know location in terms of the rental contract. I see it quite you know basically. I I like the idea of having it of of keeping it simple and and uh, tying a classroom size space to one man parcel, so that then yeah. that NFT could basically have the, the coordinates of the land, and so it represents the rights to that classroom that's built on that uh, you know land, and then from uh, there, you uh, that would be, you know, we, we implement underneath that, but what. What I think I'm keen on is I think that we could raise money in the university if people could basically invest in a classroom because they think they're going to be able to uh, you know get some some people to to uh, to uh, teach within it. And I think my friend who does the uh, School of English is a good example because I think how he does it with his English in his school it's kind of like a like if you're a hairdresser where it's kind of like you're self-employed even though you go and work in a salon and there's in its commission uh, uh, sort of based so i'm trying to i'm just trying to think of different like to, to be very flexible so there's there there's there's models to encourage people to sort of actually dive in uh, I, I really like the the 
um, another aspect of it, and that is it decentralizes the so-called marketing of that space. We don't wouldn't have to market every space to every possible teacher, but you'd have exactly. basically some aggregation of that marketing in somebody yeah. that was managing that exactly. space and I think uh, creating teaching it, and, and faculty. Yeah, I think I agree with what you're saying because I think that yeah, there's going to be a lot of, of teaching which sort of touches on the commercial area. And uh, for example, you know, English as a foreign language is a classic. But then, as but uh, the added value we can add is is by ha uh, having a, a revenue, we can develop uh, projects which aren't you know which have a wider attraction. So, for example, uh, you know, yeah, I don't think, and I always use this as an example. So apologies if I've it for, but for example, a, a school of uh, a philosophy probably is not going to be. A, you know, a, a big uh, money generator for the university. It's something which we would sponsor because we want a school of philosophy, for example. Whereas English as a foreign language could be a very competitive space where, you know, there's different, you know, approaches and, and the people will be using it as a sales uh, tool to basically sell their English as a foreign language as, as opposed to somebody else. Because in the, mm -hmm. the in these lockdown phases, I should think it's like a standard fare is English teachers who, who provide all their tuition across uh, Zoom. So if you provided like 80% of your tuition across uh, Zoom, but, but, the, but half an hour of your weekly tuition was in, in, in a 3D world in a classroom, that yeah, that gives these people an edge that that you know I which I think that that's the the model that we want. So they use it to go and as 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 their own tool to make them stand out because all of a sudden they have a three D classroom. So, uh, I um, see that Arthur's asked a good question, and I, I think our answer right now is we're envisioning becoming a you know a fully independent world international university. Um, I'm not sure that we would rule out. A partnership for some of the space with an MIT or a Yale or something, but I, I, I don't think we're merely an aggregator for um, major universities oh, or maybe. Yeah, no, I don't think. No, I don't think. I, no, I don't think we would be aggregating. However, I do think that, uh, you know, for example, let's just think about like MIT. Supposing we, uh, we provided them, like you know, you know, we had. Uh, a structure in the university called the uni the 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 universities building, and then it's basically you could uh, like a, a, effectively our server could basically uh, switch between structures, and it could uh, you know so we could provide like a dynamic application one day where universities can have a, a presence, and if we just had one classroom, but at the at the moment. We've got uh, is there, there's a 25 realms per server. Is that correct? Or is it? Uh, how many more, colors do we get? I, you know what? I think it's uh, you know it's uh, it's a lot. Yeah, it's probably 20 some. So so uh, let's just let's just say if, like just let's just pretend we've got a, a 10 servers on the network and there's and there's a 20 rooms in each server. That gives us 200. Uh, classrooms on one parcel of land. So if we think about things in that way, actually, you know, you know, giving MIT a presence or giving any educator a presence, we don't, you know, we could, you know, like MIT could put a lot of students through one classroom. If you see what I mean, if things are printed. So, so, so although I don't think, I think that our campus would largely be uh, stuff, as, you know, as Carl says, we develop you know, uh, make like a, a a new type of institution. I think we have room for people as well because I I think that just uh, you know as a basic f a bit of functionality, a a, a classroom like one three D classroom which could have uh, two hundred different configurations and two hundred different concurrent classes going on. That's quite a big institution that can fill that up. So, I. You know, so I I think that sort of way of answering the question, I think we'd be more like a um, Khan Academy of our own rather than a Coursera Coursera that aggregates university courses. Yes, definitely. I but I, I, mean, wouldn't, I, definitely I wouldn't agree. rule out that we might do some of that, but it's not kind of it's not the core of our vision. I think the core of our vision no, uh, is to build a first class international university online. Yeah. So and uh, uh, and I think that basically in terms of uh, of how we do it. 
a big part of that is showing the medium that this is, and then basically, you know, like acting as 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 the you know the 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 the, the stewards for like a particular way of presenting content in in a decentraland. And I think one of the key bits that we have to do is produce three D learning material. I think although there's a whole world of two D stuff, and actually surfacing that can actually like add a really a good uh, chunk to any curriculum but it's a really good way of of like you know if you, you could take an existing a uh, 2d course and, and, and present that in terms of the video and the uh, slides but 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 so then you can add some stuff to that in 3d and that alone could you know you know let existing teachers like uh, leverage that stuff and then we can look at what they're of uh, uh, what they have and then and then help uh, them uh, work out you know what to do in decentraland and i think like over a time uh, it would be really uh, cool to, to, you know, to actually use something like the the builder, to and probably would have to fork the builder, so that you could export the content in a slightly custom format. So our classroom could read that format, so that you could build these three D slides that we can step in between, you know, using a uh, you know the builder, which would then allow you know teachers to import a, a GOTF. Like position it in the classroom and then save that as uh, slide one and then slide two they could add something else to the room and slide three they can re uh, remove one of those objects and add something else so you can make a, a continuum of of a presentation of 3d content yeah. and i think that that is the key thing that we can add but no like zoom can't uh, do that so it's not the be all and end all but if if teachers can think well okay like like you know, like an hour of like an hour's class, you know, here once a week. It's you know, it actually uh, breaks things up. I remember at, at 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 school, they always used to give us like soft subjects. Like yeah, if you if you got an afternoon of 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 like um of of a maths ahead, then you know, you know, having like an hour of art in the morning is like you know, it, it takes the the heat off the the day. And I see this type of thing as that initially, like. In the early days, it's probably quite a lot easier to sell it as a non-serious uh, thing slightly. I mean, I'm not talking about the academic side, but I'm talking about like if you're an English teacher, then it's not going to make your your job easier, but it, it but it has its purpose, and I think that that is what you know step one is. But KJ uh, asked whether or not uh, there's any courses on the way we can look forward to. Um, I I will refer to the historical course from last. Uh, last summer, the uh, the free course uh, building virtual reality experiences in the central land, which was uh, did make use of the world for a sandbox for for the students. Um, we were granted some space by the central land, uh, not not in the university campus, although we could have used the university campuses too. But I was able to parcel out one parcel to each student that got to a certain point in the course, so that they could build their uh, class studies and, and examples for they and others people to see in world. Um, and with the new VR Academy, we're going to have a sandbox in the Academy where students or others can uh, build demos and, and materials. And as, yep. uh, as um, James said, we can set things up so that you can easily swap one scene and out, you know, different scenes in and out using the same parcel or, or you know, depending upon various conditions you see you see something or you see something else yeah so. and uh so yeah it's, it's it's exciting so i think uh i know you know i think like uh that there's 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 so many different avenues to explore in but i think just uh, focusing on this core you know of presenting uh you know content in 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 some sort of a structured uh, way like this i'm going to try and make uh, you know, like I work on for, uh, uh, by the time there's a launch of the VR Academy, kind of like an autoplay version of this classroom, which or the classroom we saw tonight, to you know just surface some of the content we have. So, for example, Carl has 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 made a, a set of YouTube uh, videos. So we'll probably put those uh, like available so that they're on demand. And although actually, if you're working through it in terms of an exercise, I can see that you know people would argue it's you know, YouTube is a pretty convenient f uh, format for that. However, it still it still helps us present what you know what this is all about. And actually, 
you know, maybe a first watch through of the uh, videos is perfect in world, and then if you're taking an, a step back to, you know, uh, yeah, do the exercise, then, you know, that's when it's handy to actually have things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in YouTube. But, and each uh, of the, many of the courses had a, a sample scene uh, that was like either to exemplify what we were building or to, before or after some sort of bug fixing or something like that. So we could put those scenes up in the in the university. Yeah. And even spin through them uh, during the course for somebody. Yes, yes. So, uh, yes, so, and, and uh, uh, that have... would, James, that would encourage us to have some sort of automation for how an individual's uh, progress through the course was. Uh, something like yes. a server-based um, class roster of, of completion so that uh, what they yes. see is relevant to the, uh, the episode that they're on. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the... Probably big decisions to to uh, make is that obviously we can just just maintain our own structure of like uh, student uh, progress, but probably in in the long run, if if the, if the take up is is good, then probably we'll quickly make the decision to to use a learning management system and then potentially yeah. you know do an integration between our back end and that learning Perfect. management system. Yeah. That's the way and, to do. It. Uh, so probably what we do is install something like a Moodle. And then we can have like some kind of, uh, you know, we can on the back end we can then have some kind of uh, like, uh, you know, OAuth or you know some form of authentication, so that uh, and that authentication uh, might take the form of you having to uh, click the link in the LMS to launch the class, because like there's there's different it's it's you know depending on on the on on what approach we sort of uh, take, but uh, or, or turn it around the other way, as Murf, Murf Jestic has uh, suggested, and that is integrate some knowledge about uh, wallet IDs into the into Moodle or whatever we use, and then you know yeah. when you log in, it's it it knows who you are because of the yeah. same wallet ID. Yeah. It might be the the quickest approach might be to 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 just just bite the bullet and just uh, do something like Fortmatic, and then integrate and then do a Moodle Fortmatic integration or something like that, because then. We would have something like first class in terms of the actual uh, crypto integration, and that would, you know, yeah, give us at a later date that could help uh, with other things. For example, uh, if you know, if like if if the owner of a classroom wanted to pay teachers and what, they wanted to organise things like that, then yeah, yeah, potentially, a, you know, a because I mean, one of the things that I am keen on is to, with, especially with the university, is to. Uh, not have too many uh, technical uh, barriers and mm -hmm. because a lot you know we're not in five years from now it's probably going to be it's a t it's a totally different uh, story but say for a, a, a you know for example if arthur decided to to uh, you know to hold a a a, a lecture or a seminar about his subject matter uh you know like you know he may have a whole bunch of real world people that would uh, bring support to that but it's, all of a sudden, it's a burden to him if he's having to onboard people t yeah. to crypto, to MetaMask. So, in a way, having a system where there could be just an old-school email kind of uh, registration followed. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you've heard, James. They're working on that. They're working. One of the big things that the team is working on right now is <laughs> yes, I have using heard, onboarding actually. and and, yeah. and using probably email as a lighter yeah. lighter weight entry uh, onboarding. So, so yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had heard that. So it is a is a definite. Just we'll watch that uh, space, and that's that's the thing that we will integrate with, uh, like an LMS. So, and I mean, the LMS will also pr provide us lots of stuff because it will basically, essentially, gather data about students. It means we can visualize that in world as well because we'll be able to expose, uh, you know, uh, stuff there on you know across REST endpoints, and you know, so for example. If we wanted to have, you know, a, like an analytics room somewhere, which is just showing all the activity that's happening, then we'd be able to do that sort of thing. And then also to have, you know, visualizations of students' own uh, learning uh, progress. Uh, you know, like we did have, and he's, yeah, he's involved. He's, gee, uh, gee, you know, once you got an NFT of your certificate, you could sell it to somebody else. <laughs> so, so there's a lot to think about about ownership <laughs> and permanence of ownership of. Uh, so, so I've got a conversation. Uh, uh, I've, 
so I, I I have a conversation going with one of the NFT providers or one of the ones that sort of do that have a sort of more generic platform, and that and that is one of the you know in terms of a minting engine, one of the requirements for us is to uh, you know to have either a certificate as you know as you know as Murph says is independent the information in the, in the certificate is independent of who owns it. And actually, that means the certificate right. has to have some notion it's of it's identity. It's yeah, it says that Arthur passed the course, and if you pass it to, you know, Fred, it still says Arthur passed the course. Well, exactly, and that's the. I mean, that is the the no nonsense solution at the end of the day, isn't it? But however, there's the argument of, uh, you know, I mean, I don't see why people would want that, like, you know, and not anonymity in terms of educational achievements, but the crypt. The crypto way would be to not have the certificate identify its owner, and then to not not have it transferable. But then, of course, you can cheat because then you're going to get people selling uh, wallets with certificates in. <laughs> so, I, I I think Murph's solution is the right one in in all all, all things considered. And it, and also the actual uh, data doesn't have to be uh, actually a, actually a public. Because we could build a system like a reference system, so that um, a you know, so that we could have a DAP by where, like, like someone can can go to verify, uh, you know, a, you know, a certificate. If we didn't want to put the the identity on it, then the token ID you should be able to just 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 go to our DAP, enter the token ID. You know, James, I would, think. If you think about it, I think that it's it's nonsense to think that a certificate certificate is valuable if there's no way to figure out who it is that 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 certifies. Even but In maybe the real world. It, maybe it's a pseudonym. But uh, you know when we when we set, created those certificates for the course last summer, we asked the person, "What do you want on it?" Yeah. They could say, you know, they could say Joe Blow if they wanted to. Um, yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah, we yeah. put on it. And many people use their Discord ID. Um, yeah. You know, personally, I've decided I, I actually want to build reputation in this world, so I'm using my real name on things. But other people yeah, yeah. choose to to use a pseudonym. But that can still be. They're going to operate in this world as you know, Murph Jestic. But the certificate could say it's Murph, Murph Jestic, and that person then would be a person you would hire. So I don't know what that. You know, uh, I guess maybe ETH names. Um, Ethereum naming service. You could associate a name with a um, with an Ethereum address, and then that gives you some anonymity, but identity that other people can refer to. This, I think, this will get worked out. I think you yes. I do want to put something in the NFT about who it was awarded to, with an identity that uh, they could transfer to a new wallet if they needed to, but still follows them. Uh, yes. And uh, in fact, I think you want to, you maybe even want to have the option of somebody. I want somebody to be able to contact me if they want to have somebody if they want to hire somebody with this skill. You can't do that today. I mean, you know, you 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 want to hire somebody. You have a fairly complicated thing to do to figure out who has the skill. But if we you know go and look at the list of NFTs that have people who have passed this course, and you can contact them and and offer them offer them work. That's something would be kind of unique to this university. Yeah. It uh, looks like we may have... James, are you still around? You're muted. For whatever reason, James is muted. So now we can talk in front of his back. <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, uh, sorry, I was muted then. Yeah. Uh, uh, Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just basically, uh, uh, I've lost where I was because I, 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 was, I, I was, I was talking away, and then I just got notified that I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we had just talked about the possibility that uh, a certificate could, could allow somebody to find you as having that skill to offer you work. That means that uh, you would need yeah. to be able to contact somebody, which means the NFT yeah. should have some way to contact you, perhaps an email address. Yes, although I would argue that uh, email addresses are transitory, whereas like for, uh, even in my 30s, I still had to provide a couple of times 
some details of my university and not 15 years earlier so i think that uh ideally if we can provide some a self a service thing so that uh you know that so we can confirm that like, so my you know my university will confirm to us you know, to anybody that i was uh, there and the, yeah the transcripts time I said I was. that's right yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just at... yeah, if we can help, if we can help graduates or alumni, alumni to uh, be connected with uh, people seeking talent, we might have some new new ways of doing that uh, because of our infrastructure. Yeah. It's uh... yes, yeah, fascinating uh, stuff. We've got a lot of work to do, but I think uh, the. You know, so the the sort of a month ahead is basically going to be evolving this classroom a little bit, uh, surfing, uh, surfacing some of Carl's material ready for and and getting it into the uh, VR academy, and then also uh, uh, getting uh, uh, stuck in with Frankie Needles as well because those guys are also going to be involved and you know they they've got a project that they're going to be uh, running in the university, so that's what that's what I'd, I'd, I'd be curious. We have a small group of. Uh you know, domain interested folks here. Um, I've been struggling in the conference center with how do you have a conference without being able for people to talk to each other in voice in the hallway, for example, or to uh, speak, um, to answer a question from the teacher in the classroom by voice. Um, text is okay. You can always use Discord, but how important do we think it is to get voice working in world? Decentralized sort of deprioritized it. They're thinking, and probably rightly, that it's fairly com complicated, so they want to get it right. But um, how, how much of a barrier is it to not have in-world voice for instruction? Well, well, you should come along to some of the conferences in the Convention Center in Crypto Valley, because they're really successful, and they're working on a platform in the state that it is at the moment. Hey, Tune Point, you're breaking up just a little bit. Where is this that you're pointing us at? In crypto, we're having like two conferences a week at the moment, um, and people are really enjoying them. Like, you know, um, if, if the presenter if presenter has a host, and the host can take questions in various different ways and ask. Um, anyway, but just come along and check out what people are doing. And find, can you put? Can you post? Uh, the, can you post something about that in the AMA text channel here? We'll go look at it. Um, yeah, I mean, look, this. what's happening this week? There's probably something on the events calendar. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's one that's a Matic are doing a stream, and next, come to this, come to Nifty London oh, next yeah. week. So, I mean, that's, that's a great model when you have a presenter and uh, moderated questions. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. If you have a uh, breakout workshop where, the, you know, uh, like a TA session or, or a workshop where people work together on a project, they, they can't really talk to each other, high, you know, high, high volume, high bandwidth voice other than going to some other mechanism, which they can do. They can use Discord. We can always, like I've done the conference that I've associated a Discord voice channel with each of the venues and it's documented, but it's just a little awkward. Um, he also wrote a thing where you can type a question into a UI and then it appears on a screen that the presenter can see. Mm -hmm. so any, anyone in the room can go and type a question in there and the presenter can see it. Um, but to be honest, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as good a solution as some of the others that we've had. Yeah, that UI is outside of world, right? No, inside world. Okay. It's like on a, a UI that each of the participants can type something into and it appears in common for everybody? Yeah. So, no, you click on the little box and the UI appears. You type into the, into the text box and then that appears on the screen for the presenter on stage. Mm -hmm. The presenter has a little screen kind of thing on stage and he can see kind of like, the question. Like James's little console will have a place where questions show up. Okay. Exactly. Uh, 
voice <laughs> thing, it's like it's not like they don't want to do it. It's just it's how to do it. To you know, there's de- there's lots of different ways of doing it, and there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of people that have issues in a lot of ways that it's done on other platforms. So it just needs a lot of a lot of attention. You know, it's I mean, really, one of the things uh, is is that the whole focus of one quarter. I, I would sure uh, uh, prefer it to come later and be excellent than come sooner and be bad. That, exactly. said, that said, I definitely miss it. I'm used to <laughs> one of the things. Yeah, yeah. One of the things is there's loads of different use cases for voice. So when you go to like VR chat <laughs> or you, or in in some busy place in Second Life, there's a cacophony around you. So. Uh, you know, so for example, I like we had this this startup, a uh, net coach, and we did have uh, a class where every student had a video stream and an audio stream, and but the the teacher had a console and could control, and could uh, could mute and and you know ra- and actually control the volume of each independent person. So if someone actually had a stupidly loud connection, the teacher could turn them down for everybody. And the teacher could mute people, and actually the teacher could also uh, cancel the video feed out as well, because there was always just like different emergency situations that a teacher needs to be able to deal with, and uh, you know one of them. You know, when you go to a conference or on a campus or something, very often you want to have a, a relatively private conversation. So Second Life has not only um, nearby chat where you can hear everybody that's speaking in that channel that's within a certain distance. But you can also in- initiate a private conversation with one or more other people, and there, and it's better than in the hallway in a in a, a venue in that you don't have to hear anybody else when you're doing that. So there's one of those the things, solutions that are actually better than real life. I mean, one of the things I do think though is that as a as a developer and as somebody like you know wanting to provide solutions in Decentraland, one of the things I'm really keen on is to always have a super simple client that is nothing like Second Life, because the problem with Second Life is that it, there's a learning, a steep learning curve to actually have full control over it. And it's, it is fantastic, like, it's really powerful once you've got that full control, but if someone just wants to pop in for something, it's, it's, it's quite so difficult. And I, I recently was in, in Second Life with some people, and, uh, and I was, uh, they were showing me some stuff, and, and between us, we couldn't get audio working for everybody, so we had to come out in, in Discord anyway. So even though the fact it worked for like eight, 80% of the people, there was a couple that, eat, and we spent about uh, 10 minutes with the person trying to guide through those people, and then he gave up. So one of the things is, is that I'd rather have simplicity and then have the ability to, with the SDK, uh, program different behaviors. So it would be a different piece of programming for a classroom as a as opposed to you know people who you know who want to whisper to, at the person next to them at a, a gig in festival land uh versus you know uh you know the experience of of uh, people who might want to talk to each other around a card table in a casino they're all different use cases and they're all going to yeah. need like c- control so i i can see that it's not an easy task because for decentraland because if they just yeah like you know provide a one-size-fits-all thing it's going to make it difficult for uh, other applications. So I think I, I, I too would rather wait for it and then use things like Discord uh, and also our own implement our own implementation as well, just in terms of speaking. You know, like we attempted at the beginning of this class and with conferences, Carl, as well. Like you know, giving a presentation, you're the only person with the microphone. Yeah, everyone else can make a noise, but there's a reason you've got the microphone and nobody else has. It's because, you know, essentially you you should be commanding the attention and nobody else should be distracting you from that. I think it could get really I, awkward if people yeah. talk over I agree completely with for that for that use case. In in the net case, the one we had is that like we were actually rolling out uh, a training across a car dealership, and there and we had like it was a live open mic, and this is before we built. Like you, the teacher could mute people, but by default, all all the mics were enabled, and everyone was because it was a, a commercial thing, so people were quiet. But there was, I'll never forget it because I was always monitoring, uh, you know, they're making sure. And there was an awkward moment of silence, and then someone just let rip and let w- out, uh, wind out, 
and everybody could hear it and it was and then somebody obviously had an open speaker and there was an echo of it and i'll just never forget it, it was like <laughs> absolute banger. so that's the, that is the thing is that you really not the teacher so that did, you don't want that <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, on that note, I think I'll. Uh, uh, has anyone else got any uh, uh, questions that, uh, that else that they would like to cover? Or, but, and we'll, uh, we'll be doing this again uh, 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 regularly. There's a couple of new things I want to add to the classroom, and then we'll put, uh, put another couple of uh, like events in the calendar. And I just, I think if we can try and do this once or twice a month, every month, then it means that we'll just see the evolution of it, and we get like all, all of us get more uh, practiced. And then maybe at some point, uh, like uh, if anyone else is interested in, you know, using this uh, tech to teach with, then I can uh, like you know, start to think about uh, whitelisting it for some uh, for some guinea pigs <laughs> to put themselves in front of a uh, uh, sort of a people with an unknown set of uh, tech. So if anyone wants to a guinea pig for that, then just let me know. Thank you, James. This was really good. Awesome. Have a nice day, everybody. Hello, everyone. Bye.